Uh, this part, I'm just going to talk about magnitude and phase of these plugins. I'm not going to talk about their impulse responses. We'll get to that later. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn on some noise. All right. And then let's um, pull up a channel EQ here and play around with it. All right, so we've got a zero, zero dot magnitude response. We've uh, actually got some delay showing here on the phase response. So let's go ahead and throw in a sample delay. And let's find out how many samples this plugin is introducing. So let's take it up here. There we go. Okay, so it introduces 15 samples. All right, now let's make a dip here of minus 20 dB at 1 kilohertz. Let's make sure that our analyzer is accurate. Um, there we go, minus 20 dB, the Q looks good. And it's a pretty typical phase response for a dip like this. Um, so let's go ahead and turn those off. Now I've already got a channel EQ here with some boosts and cuts that are pretty typical of what I might do for tuning subwoofers in a live environment. You know, I've got a bad room, I've got crummy subs, uh, whatever I'm working with, and i got to get them to sound good. So I might have to do something pretty fine-tuned and drastic like this. Um, let's uh, turn on our sample delay here. All right, and as you can see, um, there's some phase shift going on. Um, and uh, although it's nice because um, the output is actually pretty accurate to what the, the, the graph displays here uh, in terms of magnitude. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a screenshot. All right, now what I'm going to do is come back here and um, Let's go ahead and copy the settings over to a linear phase EQ in Logic, which I've already done. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to turn the amount of uh, latency on here that's to compensate. And you can see it's 2560, which is a lot, way too much for a live environment. And that's pretty typical of linear phase EQs. They tend to add a lot of latency. Um, and as you can see, um, the same graph, uh, but the output is not as accurate. I'm missing this 40 dB uh, bit here, and uh, it's just not quite as uh, tight around the edges there. It's, um, and uh, the other thing to notice about this is that I've got only four bands to work with. Now, when I'm trying to EQ the full frequency spectrum, um, you know, especially if I'm having to do work like this through every frequency range of the system, uh, a 31 band graphic can help me, and then I can use parametrics to sort of get in between the gaps there. But what's really nice, uh, for example, is if we look at the match EQ in Logic. Now the match EQ uh, by default is in a linear phase mode. We have these different modes here. We'll start with linear phase and look at it. So let's turn it on. Um, it doesn't add quite as much latency, 1536 samples. It's still more than I'd want to use for live. That's about 36 feet of delay. It's way too much for live. But um, the cool thing about the uh, Match EQ is that I can start adding as many peaks and dips as I want and start EQing the heck out of things here. No matter what I do, it's pretty accurate. It really is quite accurate. And it's linear phase. Look at that. And there's a lot of other features that go with it, but uh, what I want to show you is the fact that um, if I get rid of this and I start to try to match this low frequency area, go down here. It's not not quite cutting it here. I don't. I just don't have as much definition. Again, when you're faced, not that much definition. Uh, seems to be a pretty common tale. Um, now let's uh, let's go ahead and add a bunch of other things here. I want to show you something else with this. There is a zero latency minimal phase mode. Let's take a look at that. Same magnitude response, but obviously we start to have a lot of pitch shift. Um, so even though this feature is really cool, I have lots of points I can play with. Um, in the practical mode, your latency 
Um, I have a lot of phase shifts, so I'm looking for a linear phase EQ that has um, you know, a low latency, uh, that has definition in the low end, has a lot of points. That's what we're going for here. Actually, there's one more feature with the match EQ, the matching. That's why it's called match EQ. So let's try this out here. Now, um, what I'm going to do here is turn this off. I've got a channel strip set up with a match EQ. I've got a test oscillator run white noise. I'm going to take my original EQ here with my, my curves that we've, we've saved over here, the screenshot. I'm going to transfer it over here. Um, so let's go ahead and copy these settings, let's put it here. Let's see how well the match matching feature works. So, give it a second to analyze it. Select match. Okay, and then we'll copy this and we'll move it over to our match EQ. And then we'll turn it on. We're in uh, zero latency minimal phase, and you can even see that with the matching, it still it still just doesn't do as good a job. Now I've actually I have a separate match EQ here that I've <laughs> tweaked to try to get a little bit closer, but it still really is not. Let's turn that one on, see how we do. You can see that with that one on, the magnitude is a little bit better, but you know we're still missing that 40 hertz dip, and we've got some phase shift going on down there. Um, obviously, the graphical uh, display is, is not at all accurate, um, even more so than the, just the regular linear phase EQ and logic. So now, I want to take a look at the Q clone by Waves. Um, this this plug-in here is, um, what they say it does is it, it analyzes a EQ that you have, or a um, series of EQs, you can run it through it, um, and it will match the magnitude and phase response. Um, and so we're going to find out how well it does that. The other nice thing about this, this plugin, right off the bat, if I turn it on, um, we can see that the amount of latency that it introduces is only 352 samples. Now, with our maximum at 425, that leaves us um, close to 100 uh, or close to 75 samples uh, to play with uh, for IO devices and whatnot. Now they have an external uh, piece of hardware that you can run this on that, that has a round trip of 40 samples and it's, it's pretty neat. Um, so let's go ahead and um, I've set up another channel strip much like the Match EQ and this time I'm going to put my uh, original channel EQ into the, the loop here. There's a Q capture device that goes with the plugin that uh, transmits through the loop and it receives it. And basically anything you put in there, it matches magnitude and phase. So I'm going to open the plugin, put it into capture mode, and then I'm going to turn on this EQ here and we'll see what happens. Immediately, it makes a match. So we have a pretty good match and it also matches the phase. Now, the thing I want is I want to introduce a linear phase EQ into this loop that gives me this kind of accuracy. And that's been the trick so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just start by inserting a match EQ in linear phase into the Q capture loop. And then I'm also going to take Q clone I'm going to open it up here, put it into the capture mode. And then I'm just going to put it off to the side here a little bit. Um, all right, so now I'm going to start playing around. Turn the capture on, adding its appropriate delay. And so what's really cool about this is that we have linear phase. Remember the uh, incredible amount of latency that comes with the match EQ linear phase mode. But now I can have the exact same thing with linear phase in the Q clone for a fifth of the uh, amount of latency. Um, pretty incredible. Now, the question is, what's the definition like? 
And of course, we know that this has terrible definition. If I drag a point all the way down here, start to lose a lot of definition. And also, we start to get a little bit of, of inaccuracy in the uh, phase response, a little bit here. We'll explore that further. Let's turn this off. Now what I've actually found is I actually have here a um, different plugin made by FabFilter. Uh, it's a linear phase EQ, gives me 24 bands that I can play with, and I have actually found that it is a linear phase EQ that gives me a lot of definition in the low end. However, it adds a ton of latency. Each of these is 10,000, so there's two of those. That's 20,000 plus another 4576, 24,576 samples. That's a ridiculous amount of latency, but it is a linear phase EQ that gives me good definition in the low end. So what if I were to throw this into the Q capture loop? So let's turn that off. I've already copied and pasted it over here, so let's turn it on and let's see what Q capture does. Turn Q capture on, our Q clone with uh, Okay, so it's a little bit better. We've started to get some low frequency definition, but it doesn't follow it perfectly. Got some phase shifting going on, so it's not following either one perfectly. Now, I can actually go in here. I've created a separate. Here's the original one. And I've created another one that's exaggerated to the point where the actual output of Q-Clone is going to match this a little bit better. So if we turn that one on instead, There we go. So it matches it a little bit better, a little bit more phase shift. But what we've achieved is we now have a low latency linear phase EQ with definition in the low end, although we have to have a little bit of phase shift. Um, but we have uh, practically an infinite number of, of bands to work with. Um, you can, I could introduce a, a match EQ uh, into the mix here, and um, oops, um, match EQ linear phase, and then of course I can start tweaking up all in this range and doing whatever I want, and um, sorry that is wrong. Here we go. And you can see that I can do pretty drastic work in my high frequency, but I will maintain linear phase. It's only till I get, only when I get below 200 hertz, I can have the definition, but I give up some of the, um, some of the phase um, linearity. Now, um, the next question is how do these EQs actually sound compared to each other? Because graphs are one thing, but then how do they sound? That's where impulse response becomes uh, very important.